Hi, welcome to this week's episode of Meta, where I, a YouTuber, talks about YouTubers YouTubing. You've read the title. It's no secret that traditionally the algorithm does not reward people of color in the same way that it rewards the standard of everything. Even though most of the times when I see popular YouTubers and popular genres that I don't watch, I'm just there like, Just say it, I hope I don't sound ridiculous. I don't know who this man is. I mean, he could be walking down the street, I wouldn't, I wouldn't know a thing very harmful and yet they still keep getting platformed which is very concerning. Today however I want to talk about a sudden change of events at least on my timeline where the algorithm has very generously blessed me with loads of beautiful knowledgeable intelligent women talking about issues I care about that we should all care about really. It's like this video is going to be like a combination of me talking about social commentary which I think I fall into but also just pe a lot of people talk about commentary they usually think about reaction videos which I am not entirely into now because just laughing at a specific video feels a bit shallow without talking about the surrounding areas of a phenomenon but I think women in general have been covering that area pretty well with just like oh here is this account of like tiktok videos where this guy makes really misogynistic jokes and here's why that's a problem and here's a deep dive 30 minutes of it and I'm just going to be sitting there watching. Now that comes in the shade of me of people who look like me I mean it always has but then it, it's become a lot easier for me to find people like that I think on YouTube because usually you would have to type in black YouTube commentary people oh black women YouTube commentary people please can I find somebody because even when I search that still white people are popping up and this is not to say that I do not um value any white creators of course that is not true and it is not entirely their fault that the YouTube algorithm benefits them and I can even say some commentary YouTubers I like still do the work of using their privilege and their platform to benefit other people but it's nice when the algorithm doesn't seem like it's just making it harder like if the algorithm is taking away some of that pressure to work twice as hard to work 10 times as hard and just being like hey here are some channels for you to watch. I have a list here of the channels that I've really been enjoying watching but also I think first I think it's important to talk about why black women specifically like why this video is going to be centered around black women specifically. Firstly because I have a vested interest if you didn't notice I am also a black woman. Uh, second of all because I feel like on YouTube black women have mostly been boxed into the beauty or hair videos. I can only watch so many videos of people doing hairstyles and it is a very lucrative way to gain clout I will say because like you're teaching people how to do something that involves selling a product that is hair product so they're more likely to gain sponsorships but that also means that it becomes extremely saturated and again I can only watch so many hair tutorials because what ends up happening is a person has a very good tutorial on one specific thing gets like a million views a hundred thousand subs but all the other content they make that they make doesn't get views because how many more tutorials am I gonna watch right so they just end up not being as big on the platform as other people but the thing with commentary is there's always something to talk about like here I am but again because we are typically not associated with like commentary but now obviously some channels have started to break the mold which is really fun to see like I think the first channel that was introduced to me that a lot of people I know had started watching and then just popped up on my timeline was Teen Noir and since Teen Noir there was like Khadija Mbo and then after that a bunch of other channels just started popping up on my timeline which was really fun and then there were some other channels that were already on YouTube for a very long time like Amanda and a BB or as told by Kenya who just started getting bigger maybe because of the algorithm doing its thing that it's supposed to do but for other people as well say in the case of Amanda and as told by Kenya they'll just be talking about things again mostly the drama and the big problematic youtubers and I'll just be there like mm, I don't know what you're talking about but it's fun to watch you talk so I'm just gonna listen to you talk I'm just gonna put you in the background while I do my thing and it's enjoyable and then occasionally when I zone out from my task I'm there like oh that's that's really cool and also me zoning out also means I'm gonna let the ads play out and they're gonna get their coin which is always fun and then there are the more really really researched like I think an under eight who's even with the favors of the algorithm, still very underrated is intellectual media. She does really detailed and researched stuff. Editing actually is hopefully putting in overlays of the actual stuff so that I don't have to go into it. I really haven't scripted this. I've just sat down and 
decided to talk while there's still a bit of British sunshine. Another channel that I really like is Amanda Mariana. If anyone has watched my previous video, please go and do that by the way, but if anyone has watched my previous video, she made a video very similar to that. She makes a lot of commentary videos, some film analysis videos. She's a film student at NYU. Sometimes she falls into the like lifestyle um, category, but not lifestyle in like, which is how I typically feel about lifestyle, kind of intimidated, like, oh my God, my life is so much awesome than yours. Yes, her life is kind of more awesome than mine. She lives in New York City, but it's more of a less hyper super edited version of life. And I think as discussed in like one of her videos about making Instagram more casual, I think it the, that's the thing. The videos feel very casual. The videos feel very, you are just hanging out with them. It's not someone showing you documentary grade style editing if that makes sense there's also it's keisha it's keisha again makes videos where i'm just there like i d i don't know who these people are that you're talking about but you know what? i'll listen to you talk and she's a british youtuber as well so like sometimes she will make references that i'm more familiar with than when i'm watching i feel like everyone at this point just knows too much about america than we should but here we are even in my recommendations that i'm going to mention now the algorithm still is biased in that a lot of the youtubers i'm going to be talking about that have recently gained a lot of subscribers are american so still have some issues still have some work to do not saying it's perfect or anything i'm just saying this has been a sudden wave of new people gaining clout which i really enjoyed to see but yeah still very american focused but yeah it's keisha i think it's british yara zaid i'm probably butchering her name but is more a film commentary channel and a lot of the films she talks about are like a24 films and everyone every film channel talks about a24 and i'm just there like i have no idea what this studio is or where i would even watch their films all i have is netflix okay i'm not paying for all these other sites and yes i could easily bootleg them but when i have i've been tired of seeing like the little ads of oh there are women <laughs> in your area ready to see you like no but yeah she does a lot of film analysis and her voice in her cadence is just so soothing the editing is fantastic and i just end up sitting there watching and feeling like i've seen the film and already formed an opinion on the film before i've even seen it maybe i will see some of the films she talks about someday probably not i want to segue now into the the youtubers who've been on the platform for a longer time the black women who've been on the platform for a longer time and in that time should have at least a million subscribers or something if time and consistency are what get you to a certain number which we know it's not it's also about finding your niche your aesthetic like you people click on your channel they have a good grasp of what your channel is about i don't even know if i have that down yet i don't think so but i think that those are the things that enable your longevity and your growth on the channel i don't know sometimes again it's just a spike in the ineffable algorithm or harriet for example has been on youtube for years now and i don't know how many subscribers the channel has off the top of my head but kim foster does some really great analyses great, brings on some really great people to interview and always gives me a new perspective a perspective on things i would say my radicalization on the youtube platform is thanks to kim foster and the for harriet channel and yet for some reason she hasn't risen to like she's been i remember she was featured in some either black history month or just black youtuber uh, feature on with youtube like with actually youtube and they were featuring a bunch of creators and she was on that so they do know she exists and yet somehow her content doesn't really hasn't really risen in numbers to where it should be for the time she's been on the platform another creator in this sort of weird sect of black women has been on the platform for a very long time and yet somehow hasn't risen to the big numbers is cat black cat black makes a lot of videos detailing her experience as a trans woman or also detailing her dating experiences sometimes commentary on things going on in the media or tv shows she like the series where she watches the whole 50 shades series so that the rest of us don't have to <laughs> really entertaining her thumbnails really eye-catching her editing she has sometimes has like a two or three camera setup which is really cool and here i am recording on my phone has been on the platform basically her whole life because she started detailing her transition since she was like in her 
I think mid or late teens and yet does not have at least a million subscribers. Why? I mean they may have one big viral video but then there is still an element of needing to repress. I mean they can't oh you can't be talking about all this stuff all this stuff all this stuff all this stuff and expect us to like boost you to the front because then you're gonna have people actually thinking and we don't really need that. But also another thing I want to touch on which I feel like I've heard spoken about before I think this was in Madison Brown yet another person yet another black woman who's been blessed and has blessed us but also has been blessed by the algorithm lately where she was talking about growing and being in a very good spot I think at the time where she was saying that she had about 50,000 subscribers and saying that when you have that it's like she's soared from a thousand to fifty so it's like amazing growth but she's not at the level of virality or fame where people can start accusing her of things like being an industry plant or expecting more like expecting more uploads because again that's the thing is depending on the time you blow up so say someone like cat black or for harriet blows up and gets to a million subscribers they have a backlog of like seven or five years of content that a person can binge before they start clamoring for new content whereas if you blow up and you only have like five videos at some point people are going to run out of things to watch and then they're going to be on you knocking on your door for new content and then there's also the thing of people just out of jealousy or spite or something you get get to maybe from 50 to 100 to 150 to 200 and then there are questions of but is this person really authentic oh are you only doing it for the money like um (laughs) newsflash yes at some point it does kind of stop being a hobby if you're making that amount of money you want to keep making money but also you can't expect people to always want to do things for free Why is it that when someone expresses that they want to do something for money, it's automatically labeled as inauthentic? Why do people, especially black women, why are black women specifically expected to want to do things, to want to educate people? Because again, I'm talking a lot about commentary channels here. Commentary channels do educate people people on things like race, things on intersectionality, on sexism and stuff and how to dismantle that in ourselves why do you expect that level of intellectualism for free it doesn't make any sense it doesn't add up why that would upset you why you wouldn't want to see a person rewarded for their work there's also the thing of like i too will get comments that are like oh my goodness you should have more subscribers which part of me is like (laughs) yes (laughs) <laughs> and then another part of me the bigger like 95 percent of me is like oh my god that's so sweet of you because i i literally do nothing here in comparison to all the other channels i watch but then say a person does blow up some people feel like it's like when an indie musician has their song blow up on tiktok people are like oh my goodness um I, you know that used to be my niche like oh you don't know this music and now they're famous how dare they be famous now everyone likes their music now i don't like their music i only like their music because my my whole personality trait is liking things that other people don't know about you need to evaluate why you don't want people to be compensated for their work a person getting famous getting their recognition because it's not like in i guess the old days where say for the example of like the musician thing a person selling a record would make money from the record now a spotify stream is like point zero 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 five percent of a cent in profit to the musician so the more people actually discover them and they get more exposure and payment that is good for you because it means your musician gets to make music for you it means your youtuber has more incentive to make videos for you but if you want to stifle the growth of your favorite black youtubers because you don't want them to stop being your niche thing that is extremely toxic But yes, any other black women YouTube channels that I haven't mentioned, I will mention in here or in here or in the description. And if you are new here and have somehow stumbled upon this channel, then maybe you want to stick around and check out my other content. I just wanted to say that even though there was this very wonderful period of me getting all these wonderful channels recommended to me and all these wonderful black women's channels blowing up, I don't foresee it continuing Because already I'm having to do the thing again of having to search for everything and they just sort of stopped 
recommending like i don't know is it just me is it just my timeline but i feel like it's been acknowledged by a lot of people that a lot of black women's youtube channels have been blowing up which has been really fun to see and i guess this video sort of serves as me moralizing that moment and a way to come back and remember hey remember that time when the youtube algorithm was being reasonable you remember that anyway guys thank you so much for watching i hope you've enjoyed this video somehow please like please subscribe i also have a coffee account if you want to support this channel i We'll see you for the next video next time.